constructing a systematic review search in Google Scholar. Strategies to use when constructing a Google search, a, a systematic review in a Google search is you want to use the bar equals R, the space, an actual space represents and, you're limited to 256 characters. The benefit of using Google Scholar is that it searches full text, which is different than databases or different than PubMed because PubMed searches the title and the abstract, but it doesn't search the full text of the article. So one benefit of using Google Scholar is that it um, searches full text. Usually I recommend Google Scholar as an, in addition to databases, but just depending on what your professor has said your assignment is, if you choose to use Google Scholar, this is the way I suggest you do it. You only want to retrieve the first 100 results. That's the number I usually give for systematic reviews. However, if for your assignment, your teacher says you only need 20 or 50 results, then you can limit it to 20 or 50 results. And finally, I recommend that you use publish or perish software to search Google Scholar and send the results to a citation manager, for example, EndNote, because if you search directly in Google Scholar, it will, you have to, um, click each individual citation to send it to EndNote, and that's just really tedious. So if you use this particular software, you can bulk export all of your citations into your citation manager all at one time. And the reason I recommend the bars and the spaces and the 256 characters is because it makes it easier for you to report your methodology, the method, the search strategy that you use to search Google Scholar, and it's uh, reproducible. This is the website to the Publish or Parish software. It's a free software. And you just go to the website and you download it. You can, it works on a Mac or a PC and you just follow the instructions. Here is our Google Scholar example. Our research question is, is PCR more effective than traditional parasitological methods in detecting hookworms in human feces? So we want to compare two different methods for testing hookworms in human feces. The first thing we do is identify our keywords and I've identified those in red, PCR, traditional parasitological methods, hookworms, and feces. So it is possible that sometimes a you know, human could be important. I chose not to include this for just my first round of searching and if my results were just really all over the place then maybe I'll add in, fe I'll add in human but for right now I just decided to try feces, hookworms, you know, just the major, the major things. But in my mind, I do know that human is important. I know that I'm, I'm looking for hookworms in humans. So that's something I'm going to keep in mind, and that's actually going to come in handy later in my search. But, you know, this is a trial and error type thing. So you kind of try one particular thing, you look at the results, you evaluate them, and then you modify your search. But for this first round, I just chose to focus on feces. But I'm keeping in mind that this is in human beings. So the next thing I do is I list my synonyms. So in our PubMed search, we did synonyms, we did keywords, synonyms, and then we also did mesh terms. Google Scholar doesn't have mesh terms, so in Google Scholar, we only do keywords and synonyms. So here are my keywords in this first column. I've identified everything from my search, and now I want to find other ways. How else would someone, if they're looking for articles or they're writing about this particular topic, what other words might they use? And um, so for PCR, I came up with polymerase chain reaction. And so again, I go to, I go to, I have several options for finding out brainstorming synonyms. One is my clinical expertise, just in the field, you're gonna know what people tend to say. Another is I can use PubMed, I can use MeSH, the MeSH database to give me ideas for keywords. I can also, look on Google, just try to type in the keyword that I have and see what other ways there, there are of saying that. And the other way is I can look at other systematic reviews to see how people tend to um, search for, for the concept. So the first thing is, let's just say PCR. So when I run PCR, when I put in PCR, uh, I see some, I see polymerase chain reaction, right? And so I can just kind of scroll through my results a little bit, kind of see what I'm getting, get some ideas here. So I know PCR, polymerase chain reaction. I can also go to 
Hamed. And I'm going to go to the PubMed homepage. I go to the Mesh database. And I type in PCR. And so this is the actual Mesh term. I read this definition here. And if it matches the concept I'm thinking about, I click on the Mesh term. And there's a lot of information here, but I'm going to focus on this part right here that says entry terms. And this is where I get ideas for synonyms. I don't have to use these things, but it just can give me ideas of other ways to word it. So I notice I see polymerase chain reactions. I see, so it's either singular and plural, but I also just see PCR. So if I use PCR, I'm gonna get an article that says inverse PCR, a nested PCR. So if I can just use PCR and polymerase chain reaction. That's what I'm gonna go with. So I would use those same methods for my other concepts as well. I would use Mesh Database, Google Scholar, not Google Scholar, just, just a regular Google search, or I'll try to find other systematic reviews on each individual concept just to see what words they tend to use. So using those methods, I came up with this list of synonyms. So if you watch the PubMed search, you'll notice that this looks a little different in the sense that I put them in quotation marks as opposed to using dashes and asterisks. And that's because those, that's really symbols to use in PubMed, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything in Google Scholar. So in Google Scholar, when I want Google Scholar to look for a phrase, I just put it in quotation marks. So another thing is the third thing is to combine my search, my terms with either the vertical line, which represents or, or I can use a space and that represents and, and sometimes if I need to exclude certain words, then I can use a minus sign. And so when I construct my search, it looks like this. I have PCR with ball, with the vertical line and I have a space here because it's the next concept. So again, when I'm combining my search, my terms, I go across columns. I use or across columns and I use and between rows. So this is what my final search looks like. And this is very, you can report this in your method section so that someone else can do the same search you did and they should be able to reproduce your results. Now, at this point, I copy this and I paste it into Publish or Parish. I open the Publish or Parish software on my computer and I paste the search where it says keywords. I don't want to do it in the title because one of the benefits of Google Scholar is that it searches full text. So if I tell it to only search the titles, I'm missing the benefit of Google Scholar. And if I wanted to put years, I could put that, but I don't have that for my search. This is important, the maximum number of results, you set this. So I said 100, but if your teacher says you could only need 50 or 20, and if she allows you to use Google Scholar, then you just set the appropriate number here. And then you would click search, and it runs your search. And so you can see I, I've already ran, I ran my search already. And so the next thing you would do is when it's time for you to send the results to your citation manager of choice, you would click save results. And I'm going to try to make this a little smaller so you can see. Okay. Save results. And then you get this list here, and then you select the appropriate one. So if it's EndNote, you would click EndNote if you want to send it to, you know, Mendeley or Zotero or whatever. But you click the correct citation management, and it will um, create this file, and then you can upload it into EndNote or into whatever citation manager you want to use.